10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You're live. And good afternoon. Welcome to the GO Next Generation High School. Our featured guest school today, we have with us Miss Megan Murphy from Circle City Prep. She will be joining us live today on our parent information session. I'm going to quit talking and pass it over to the people you want to hear so much from, our school leaders. Ms. Kelly Marshall, you are first. Wonderful. Good morning or afternoon. Um, I am Kelly Marshall, the proud principal of GEO Next Generation High School, and I am so very grateful to have the awesome Megan Murphy um, on with us. Um, one, we wanted to make sure that we were taking an opportunity to celebrate the great leaders that um, exist here in Indianapolis and to give them a platform um, to just talk about some amazing things that um, are happening in their schools. So GEO Next Generation High School is opening its doors. Um, this fall to grades 9, 10, and 11, um, and we are co-locating with Circle City Prep. So without further ado, I'd like to give Megan the mic right now and let her introduce herself and just brag a little bit about Circle City Prep. Certainly. Well, good afternoon, and thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. Um, as Kelly said, my name is Megan Murphy. I'm the founder and head of school of Circle City Prep. We are uh, loaded, located at 42nd and Franklin, where GEO will be in just a few short months with us. We opened in 2017, serving 78 kindergarten and first grade scholars and have grown uh, to, in our 2021 school year, we'll be serving 225 kindergarten through fourth grade scholars. So each year we add a new grade level, about 50 new students. Um, and by 2024, we'll be about 500 students kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, we are just loving the work that we're doing um, that out there, loving all of our families. I know we're going to kind of get into this, but I, if any of our parents are on, uh, all the love and support to our parents right now during this closure time, uh, Circle City Prep families are absolutely rocking out e-learning and just incredibly proud of the work that our scholars and our parents are doing as well. So thanks for the opportunity, Kelly. Excited to kind of dive in. Let's see. Megan, that was a perfect segue. Um, we'd like to take an opportunity today to just offer parents um, some general tips on how to best support their scholars, you know, during this time of um, e-learning. And so can you just talk a little bit about, one, how your school um, has prepped and pre um, prepared um, for this type of what unexpected closure, and then just some general tips that you'd like to offer your families a Circle City Prep? Certainly. Um, so we just wrapped up our fourth week of e-learning and our seventh week of remote learning. Um, our e-learning program consists of mostly online programs. So almost all of our families have a, a, a device or a Circle City Prep device at home um, to engage in our platforms like Lexia and Zern, which are some online programs. Uh, they also um, are accessing our YouTube videos. We have daily videos for writing, science, and read aloud. Um, and then we have three guided reading calls on Zoom every single day. Um, we prioritize which content stream that we are looking to increase engagement. Uh, this week, we were looking to increase our guided reading engagement, and we had 75% um, uh, engagement with four calls over the course of the whole week from our scholars, which was absolutely incredible um, to our families. That is the most pivotal um, part of our e-learning process because uh, scholars get to engage with their teachers and their peers and they get direct feedback in the moment to drive forward their instruction and their learning. Um, it's, we love seeing their bright faces and we've just been so impressed of like how they have adapted to um, you know, being on video screen and, and all of those things as well. Um, when I think about what I would continue to want to message to our families, I think first and foremost, we, you need to give yourself grace, right? Like this is a stressful <laughs> time. So many of our families and, and parents are actually frontline workers um, and are not only balancing now becoming their child's teacher at home, but also having to work and what that means for their family in, in, in all of those day-to-day -to -day things. Um, and so if you miss an assignment, if a scholar is not able to hop on a Zoom call, it's okay. Um, you are doing great by your children and please know that we are here to support you 100% of the way in that process. Um, so don't stress out. We have so many of our parents who are just working so incredibly hard and um, we wanna make sure that this process is fruitful and impactful and, and continuing your scholars engagement and learning, but mostly that we're here to support you in this um, unprecedented time. 
my second piece of advice is create a schedule if possible. Um, students, particularly young students, um, thrive on routines and structures. And so if you wake up at the same time, you have breakfast at the same time, and you go through your day in a very sequential, um, consistent manner, um, your scholars are and your, your children are more able to predict what's going to happen. And it's more easy to continue to have a, a su successful day. One thing I'm very proud of of our e-learning program is we've a, we've created a place that's very adaptive. So if you wake up at 7 a.m., you can start your day. If your scholar doesn't wake up till 10, you can start your day. We have a lot of different options. So really mold what schedule works for you. I would say write it down, put it on the fridge, review it with your scholar over breakfast. Um, hey, Tyrese, today we're starting our day at 8, at 8.30. You're going to make sure you do Mr. M's PE uh, Zoom, uh, YouTube video. You're going to hop on your guided reading call at 10 to see Miss Austin and just make sure that they understand the structure of the day so they know what to anticipate for their schedule. And last but not least, I would say definitely put in breaks, wiggle breaks. It's okay to have a little screen time. Let's go outside and run around um, if, if you're able to do that. Um, but breaks are incredibly important and it doesn't have to be filled with just um, engagement with content that way. So give yourself grace, create a schedule and definitely schedule those breaks in there as well. I have a question for you, Ms. Murphy. Yes, How do you think, or, or are there many differences for our young scholars uh, compared to our high school scholars with the e-learning? Do, do we have similar challenges or? Yeah, I think um, I've had a lot of reflections um, about both the challenges and things that we're learning from, from this moment. Uh, one of the things that I'm excited that Circle City Prep is doing better now and will continue to improve on when we open our doors again is how we're educating parents to be educators of their children, right? Um, and so I mentioned the power of the Zoom calls that we have is that's the only time children get to have feedback of what they might have missed and then get to try again. You don't really get that. Even with an adaptive literacy or, or math online program, you don't get that opportunity to be pushed specific to what's going on. Um, and so we rely on parents to do that. So another part of our component is students submit uh, weekly writing assignments. Uh, we create a rubric and then we create a video for parents to know how to edit and, and go through those writing assignments with their children. Um, and so I think we lean on parents significantly or older siblings or aunties or grandmas or anyone in, in that <laughs> space to be providing that feedback for our youngest. Gotcha. Um, for K2, when you're learning to read instead of reading to learn, that really requires someone to be with you um, versus if you already have a strong um, literacy rate, you're reading on grade level and you're in third or fourth grade, you can get a lot of Google Classroom material. You can read some articles, do some responses. Um, but in that K2 year and those foundational literacy time, you really need to have that feedback for scholars. Um, so I think that is a unique challenge. And then of course, I'd have to say, being antsy, um, etiquette on a video for a five-year-old. I mean, you, whatever you're imagining a five-year-old on a Zoom call, that is 100% it. Um, and I actually just had a, uh, I was playing trivia with a friend on Zoom last night and she's a speech pathologist um, in a township and she does work with three and four-year-olds. And I could not imagine Zoom calls with a three and four-year-old to get them to focus and, and do that work. But um, it's a challenge we love and we love the energy they bring for sure. Absolutely. Um, we're going before Miss Marsha gives us an update for Geo Next Generation High School. My co-host moderator has like joined us right now. We, we've added Dr. Thomas Brown. He's gonna co-moderate our session for our parent information session today. Hello, Dr. Brown, and welcome. Well, uh, uh, hello, and how are all of you all? And I'm still learning this thing called Zoom, Zag, the Sip, whatever you call it. Uh, this time, this time Kelly got me. I am. You talking about? Hmm. I'm in kindergarten. I need to go to school again. That's for throwing all those questions at me at the radio. That's what I it knew, is. I, you probably Step in the mind world now, Doctor Brown. Step yeah, in the mind. Set me up for this one. <laughs> it's great timing, Doctor Brown. We we're gonna have Miss Marshall provide some updates. Uh, and information for uh, Geo Next Generation High School parents. Okay, Absolutely. let's get busy. Okay, so Geo Next Generation High School um, is opening, like I said, in the fall on the Far East Side, co-locating with Circle City Prep. Um, we take a more unique approach to the dual credit early college world in that we don't have adjunct professors that come onto our site and teach within the high school um, I would say structure. What we do is we offer opportunities for students to earn college credits and experience the college experience 
on a college campus as early as their freshman year. So as students matriculate into that ninth grade, we are kicking off our summer session June 1st, um, getting some um, test prep and I, I'm not gonna say remediation, I'm gonna call it enrichment in order to prepare them for the college and career readiness exam. So those students that demonstrate the ability to handle and master um, those college um, courses, we then allow them the opportunity to be transported right from our high school onto the college campus. We have partnerships with Ivy Tech, Marion University, IUPUI for our high ability scholars. And also uh, we are securing partnerships with Vincennes and we continue um, on and on. This is not um, a model that is foreign to Indiana. There are a lot of great schools that have dual credit programs. What we pride ourselves on are, is the evidence and the models that we have in existence that have um, proven very fruitful for our students. We are, GEO Next Generation is part of a network of schools. We have schools in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in which this model is in place. And we have 21st century um, um, high school, and I'm sorry, 21st century is actually K-12 in Gary, Indiana. And those students have already been taking advantage of this dual credit, I'm gonna say early college experience. And we have right now on May 18th, we'll be graduating 49 seniors. And of those 49 seniors, they have an excess of 800 plus college credits already under their belt. We have at least, at the very least, five to eight scholars that have already obtained an associate degree and they're also pursuing those additional college credits. And so what does that mean to a parent? That means that when they step onto that college campus or if they choose to move into a career, um, they have had the experience and they're also cutting down the amount of time that they would be spending to obtain those degrees or to obtain that certification. And research shows if a student stays in college longer than what, four years, they're very likely not to finish. Absolutely. So at, at GEO, giving them the opportunity to knock out some of those college courses um, while under the nurturing care of us allows them more reassurance that they are going to finish um, on time, if not early. Um, so it's not uncommon for a GEO scholar to be pursuing a bachelor's degree um, while also finishing up and completing their high school requirements. So I'm excited to bring this model to Indianapolis. I am excited to be partnering with um, Megan Murphy. Earlier on the radio, Dr. Brown hosted myself and Crystal Westerhouse of Avondale Meadows. And so we are securing partnerships with Paramount, um, with Andrew J. Brown, with Circle City Prep. You only go to fourth, but we're looking for your siblings and we're looking for your students to continue to grow so that they can matriculate into our high school model. Um, so I'm excited about this opportunity and I'm gonna do a shameless plug before Dr. Brown comes on. If you are interested in enrolling in GEO Next Generation High School, we are accepting students from grades nine, 10 and 11 this fall. Please, please, please feel free to contact us at area code 317-608-6220 or log on to our website at geonextgenhsnd.org. How, how was that, Dr. Brown? I'm learning a lot from you. Was that okay? That, that was excellent. <laughs> that, that was excellent. I can't even drink my coffee because I'm looking at myself on, on the screen. That's a whole nother challenge. And, and see, it, and if Ms. Murphy can, can provide us with their information, for parents yeah, who are uh, interested in enrolling. They are enrolling right now, parents. They're enrolling right now, kindergarten through fourth grade. Uh, we have uh, quite a few uh, kindergarten spots as that's like a, a new grade level for us, but we have a few spots in first, second, third, and fourth grade. So if you have a scholar in one of those grade levels, I highly recommend doing it sooner rather than later. Uh, you can find us online, www.circlecityprep.org. Um, you can call us 317-643-4209. We also have Facebook and um, Instagram are also great pathways to engage with us as well. Um, and we're also on Enroll Indie. So if you get on that site and just search uh, Circle City Prep or search the zip code 46226, um, our school site will come up there as well. Yeah, yeah. Megan talks real fast, slow down. <laughs> now, Megan, you you all you already have the eighth graders going in with us, right? 
We do not. So we are, we're a slow growth model. So we only add one grade level a year. So currently we're kindergarten through third grade. We'll add fourth grade next year and so on and so forth until we're K-8 in 2024. Oh, see, been there and done that. We started 16 years ago at AJB. You're right. You start one, well, K, one and two, you pray yeah. for three and four and on and on. Well, you, you start and you call yourself the Circle City? Circle City Prep. Yes, sir. Circle City Prep. I, I like that. Now, uh, 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 Kelly, what? <laughs> I have to throw something back at you. Cause <laughs> I know I, you are. I, I, I'm, I'm, as a folk, this may not sound right. I'm freaking out looking at myself. I made sure <laughs> well, my hair. Well, while while you're getting off. your question together for Ms. Marshall, let's <laughs> also remind ahead. our listeners they can write in questions and we'll take questions while you're uh, giving Ms. Marshall, Ms. Murphy a hard time, Dr. Brown. Go ahead. Yeah, you, know, you are, whoever, wherever you are who are looking at us, you can call in. What's the number they can call in on? What do they do with the Facebook? Or what's that thing? Uh, what do y'all call it? Your iPhone? What do they do, Kelly? They can call now and interact, right? Absolutely. So we're right on Facebook Live. So this is airing right now on their phone. So they literally can go in and type a comment directly to us. And then Shan will call it off to us and we can respond. So we are live right now on Facebook. Okay, Shan, are you getting any calls? Uh, you yeah, go ahead with your questions, and I'm gonna float them out at when you, while you guys are talking. Okay, all right. Some of the questions: What are the, and particularly to, uh, to Kelly, what are what are some of the tips or ideas to make learning more effective that uh, that uh, the new uh, next generations is going to bring bring to the bring to the livelihood of education. What are, what are some of the teaching methodologies utilized, Kelly? That is an absolutely great question now. Right now, what we're doing is trying to come up with the best reentry plan. So what we thought was going to be your amazing typical rollout of a new school launch has now become, let's look at the data that we have with the students that are in place and families identify what's working, look at the engagement percentages, look at the rate and pace of the curriculum and how it's being rolled out to students and whether or not we are actually um, receiving that kind of outcome in return. We're also looking at the needs in terms of what does it look like um, for students in terms of internet access because all of these great programs that are being offered may not continue to exist, right? So Dr. Brown, if you had asked me this question, you know, two months ago, I would have said, we are preparing right now, getting teachers ready for standards-based instruction. And that has turned into leaders right now are looking at the data to determine the needs of the students and the engagement and the progress in order to determine how will we approach instruction with our students next year. Megan was given an opportunity to just talk about how some of the younger kids, um, it's how the children, I'm sorry, thank you. The children, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a challenge to keep them engaged. It is no different at the high school. I also, in addition to being the, um, launching the school here in Indianapolis, I'm the chief academic officer for our schools in Gary, Indiana. And I'll occasionally pop in on those high school classes, same way. We've got, you know, our students are trying their best to focus, but it's new to them. And so they're excited when they see all their teachers on, you know, on the screen. And so it's learning how to jump in and out of breakout rooms instead of doing a turn and talk. So all of those strategies that teachers have been mastering within the brick and mortar, they're now having to be super innovative within this virtual in environment and learning every day. So Dr. Brown, we are preparing for a re-entry while we launch. Megan, let me ask you, Megan, you've got, you've got a very sensitive, all, all of the young people are sensitive. Do you feel that our children and their parents need to be tested? I know this is a tough one. For COVID? Yes, yeah. I think 100% of all people need to be tested for COVID. Oh, I agree. Um, so... Okay. Uh, we actually have to share this with you, Kelly, but we just got access to Win Casino's reentry uh, plan for how they're going to open up their casino in Vegas. It's a really, really strong example of an operational 
um, rollout of what it's going to look like for gradual um, reentry, just even in the logistics of coming in the building. Um, and so we're doing things like that where we're looking both at schools. Um, Denmark just opened up their schools last week. Um, how did they do that? What can we learn just about logistics and operationally from there? What can we learn from private entities um, to make sure that we are operating with really strong best practices when we when we welcome back our 225 students in the fall? Um, you know, if testing is available, we are about it. Uh, that is certainly something that we think we should explore. Um, we, uh, but more than likely, we're, it's not heading down that route where we'd have access to that. Um, before you hopped on, Dr. Brown, we mentioned also like majority of our families are some frontline workers. Um, those are the ones that are the heroes, the essential workers right now. Um, and sadly, that means they are more likely to be around the virus. Um, and therefore, and that's, and Kelly, that's why I was talking about having such grace for our parents, because not only like educating your children going to work, but the sheer distress of having the anxiety of potentially getting the virus and spreading it to your family, let alone anyone, is, is in itself can be um, incredibly draining um, and, and stressful for lack of a better term. And so, um, but just thinking about that our families are um, some of those essential workers, um, thinking, you know, we always take this seriously, but we want to take it as serious as possible just to make sure that we continue to have a safe and healthy school community. Okay, um, we have a parent question uh, for both Ms. Marshall and Ms. Murphy. How hard will it be for my child to qualify to get into the program at your school? At Who wants to go first? Well, at Next Generation, we are a traditional public charter school. There is, we are not um, a private sector. So it's literally you, if, if we are the right choice for you and your scholar, you would simply um, come log on, give me a call, talk with any of, of our representatives at Geo Next Generation, fill out that application, and we have our first um, parent orientation. Well, not even our first, it'll be our second because we just had a call, didn't we? But our um, next parent orientation on May 19th. And, but there, there are no um, prerequisites um, for students to enter. Uh, we are the exact same way at Circle City Prep. We are a public charter school. So anyone who's the right age, um, no matter where you live, uh, charter schools do not have catchment zones. Um, you are able to um, enroll at Circle City Prep, kindergarten through fourth grade. Um, just like Kelly, we deeply believe that every child should actually have access to a, an amazing education supported by amazing teachers um, in, a, in a great school community. And if that is, if Circle City Prep is the right place for you, um, we are we are open to any scholars kindergarten through fourth grade. We have a second uh, question, parent question. For next generation, will students have to pay for any college courses when attending next generation? Absolutely no cost. Um, a part of our model is that we assume all costs um, for not only the students to um, take and um, take those college courses, receive that instruction, um, but also we do provide satellite stops from our campus to the college campus and back. Um, so although we can offer the door-to-door, -door, we are partnering with um, our different feeder schools to offer that, those satellite um, stops, but there is no cost to families. Uh, Ms. Murphy, actually, that was a third uh, question we just received about uh, transportation for each of the schools or satellite stops. So Ms. Murphy, did, would you like to add anything for you all with your transportation? Certainly, we do not offer transportation um, at Circle City Prep, so our families do drop off their scholars. Um, a lot of our families carpool or use um, a neighborhood um, daycare uh, as well. Um, we open our doors at 7.30 and we close at 4 o'clock, so we do have an extended day that also supports a lot of families to be able to access our school. Uh, both uh, 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 Megan and, and Kelly, you all can overlap on this question because in earlier today, people were talking about the performing arts. Now for Megan, I would ask you, is that part of your initial cu curriculum of the performing arts? We know that Kelly and I have talked about performing arts that's tied into uh, IBE, Indiana Black Expo, in regard to the little people. Just let me say the little people. I, I, I like to call them the little people that, you know, they, they got more sense than I have, the little people. <laughs> they have not lost common sense. They, they, the sense is very common to them, but you know how we get up. But do you have any initiatives taking place in regard to the performing arts? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So in the past three years, um, we have a, a, an enrichment program. So scholars received um, gym and yoga class every day. This year we extended yoga. more, or not every day, excuse me, uh, every week. So they would have gym two days um, a week and yoga um, one day a week. Um, and then we expanded to a martial arts program this year. So they also have a martial arts instructor that came in. We've then extended our um, uh, extension program, which is our after school program to include some performing arts with the dance team, um, martial arts. Again, we have robotics, um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Um, and so this is, I am gonna answer about performing arts. It is something that we are looking into and continuing to want to have um, opportunities for our students to access and leverage talents that they have and that they're uniquely great at. Um, if, if I have a couple seconds, I, I was recently talking to somebody about when I was a kid, I got to do gymnastics, I got to do um, swimming, I got to do soccer, basketball, chess club, and I was terrible at most of them, um, but good at <laughs> soccer. But I wouldn't have known if I hadn't had the opportunity to explore a bunch of different paths and see what I was passionate about and what I was uniquely capable to do. Um, and I think that has to be part of our model. Like at our core, we, we must know that academics is what Circle City Prep is here. We are here to ensure that every student is at or above grade level, can access any high school um, class AB, IB track, um, and is ready to walk through the doors of college when, when they graduate um, from high school. But with that is also ex extracurricular activities. And we have to ensure that our students, particularly in the community that we serve, there was not a lot of other options for them to do. Um, there's not a soccer program one that's close and two that's affordable and so we are excited to continue to take that on um, and we are offering more extension programs next year and our goal currently is that 50 percent of our scholars are engaging at least one of our extension programs throughout the course of, of the year and are looking just to grow that year over year as well i'm impressed you mentioned one of my favorite areas i'm a cryo yoga uh, specialists and cryo yoga been doing it for 40 years awesome you are, you're including young people in the yoga, teaching them breathing techniques. Teaching yes. Them, uh, uh, have you taught them tapping? Um, tell me what that is. Probably not, but possibly. <laughs> tapping is when you do this, and you start off with this, and you concentrate in the process of tapping. And yeah. And pull it up, tapping, is, and it's okay. very good for them. Yeah, we've, we've um, partnered with Indie Yoga Movement. So we have a yoga instructor that comes in each week and leads through that. And I, I think I've seen her do a class on that. She, I mean, she's just, there's so many different things. I, I'm glad, I mean, we could talk about yoga and mindfulness as, as much as possible, <laughs> particularly just with five-year-olds who think that like they're the only ones that have ever experienced, you know, being frustrated and just having some self-regulation in those skills. Um, but I remember one lesson and then I'll stop talking. Uh, she brought in a Hershey's Kiss and every kid got it. And they talked about this, the feeling of opening the Hershey kiss and the smell of it, and then made them become self-reflective of like, what did that garner in you? Do you have a specific memory? Does this make you happy? Does this make you sad? You got to nibble on it. They got to experience. And just the, the, the consciousness that comes um, with the program and the process is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, but if you want to see the most um, not peaceful yoga class, come hang out with five-year-olds, uh, 25 of them in a one classroom doing downward dog. It's a very active yoga <laughs> class. For sure. I, 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 I think I know what you mean. I only take five and seven at a time. And, and that five to seven of them, and uh, it, I, I understand clearly that dynamic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we only have like a couple minutes remaining, ladies. And if, I guess we'll let Miss Marshall uh, give her closing remarks. And then Miss Murphy and Dr. Brown, you can close us out. Well, well I'll, I'll close y'all out with my favorite one. Go ahead, Kelly. All righty. Well, first of all, Megan, thank you so much for joining us. Um, because again, there are amazing things going on in Indianapolis and some amazing educators. Um, as a seasoned educator of 20 plus years, <laughs> um, I'm just going to say it is. it really warms my heart to see all of us working um, collaboratively, um, more so than I've ever experienced. And so I'm very confident in your programming and I have no qualms about bringing you and other strong leaders on here to promote your academic programs because I know that you are doing the work um, that's best for our students, students that are often denied access um, to high quality instruction and nurturing environments, um, you know, that forgotten population. And we're gonna continue to bring their, um, their abilities and potential to the forefront in 
platforms like this. And so spread the word, get your colleagues on here with us um, because this is not the last time that you will see Dr. Brown and Kelly Marshall and Shan Hart on Facebook Live. Um, but again, um, I am the proud principal launching GEO Next Generation High School in the fall welcoming grades 9, 10, and 11 if you are interested in enrolling and experiencing a dual credit program that is unique to any other in Indianapolis, please reach out to area code 317-608-6220 or hit us up on our website at geonextgenhsindy.org. Megan, words, last words on how amazing Circle City Prep is and where and why people should apply. Certainly. So I have two quick announcements for current families. Be on the lookout for five books to be delivered to your home. We're helping you build your home library. Um, we are also having a, a, a supplies delivery to you, whiteboards, markers, crayons, and all of that to continue that learning at home. So be on the lookout for those two. Um, also an announcement for current families and uh, future families. We are moving one to one in preparation if we do need to go to closure again next year. Um, and so every scholar at Circle City Prep will receive a Chromebook and have internet access. Um, so it's one thing that we are very excited about being able to offer our families. Uh, if you're interested in enrolling, www.circlecityprep.org or give us a call 317-643-4209 enrolling kindergarten through fourth grade scholars. Megan, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think it, it will behoove every school in, India, in Indiana right now to go one-to-one. -one. Geo Next Generation will be one-to-one -one as well. So Chromebooks and access um, to internet will be provided to our scholars and families also. Awesome. And here's the final yoga statement. Remain actively calm and calmly active. Love it. Well done, Dr. I Brown. It. I love it. You're a zoom pro, Dr. Brown. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You're doing great. <laughs> awesome. Well, if we don't have any other um, questions, or I don't see any additional questions from our uh, community or from parents, I'm trying to get one last look before we go off. Uh, this certainly concludes our parent, Eastside Parent Information Session. Again, we thank you so much, Ms. Murphy, for being a partner and being on with us this afternoon. Dr. Great. Brown, always well done. Well done. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that the devil ain't going to do for y'all. Y'all know my statement. I'm going to leave you alone. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much. Be sure to join us on and get unfollowed Circle City Prep and Geo Next Generation High School. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, Bye. now. Bye. Bye.